What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, with the, or recording from the portable studios of however I record. Basically not in my usual um, room that I'm recording in, not in a actual park this time. I'm at a park, but I'm in the parking lot. Um, having some work done at home, it's not really, really quiet. So I was like, how am I going to record? And I figured I, since I was going to go to the park anyways, um, I thought I'd do the recording outside a little bit, but it was also noisy with a lot of people there. So in my car, I sit and record. So for this week's episode, um, not a lot of stuff to review. Um, I'm going to have a trailer to review, a couple of DC properties as far as films go to review. Uh, video game update and the next TV show um, update as well and a bit of um, upcoming review or an upcoming film to watch as well so in the middle of that TV show that I'm watching so with that let's jump right into it so as far as the movie trailer review goes um, this week was a particularly good week because as it turns out my one of my favorite horror movie franchises is getting a new film the film is called Saw X. It's a sequel and prequel film for that matter in the Saw franchise where it's the, a prequel kind of to the last film with Chris Rock but it's also a sequel film where uh, we get a little bit more of a backstory as far as the chemo treatments go that relates to Jigsaw. So if you're generally familiar with all of those films that were released you know that um, Jigsaw had cancer, so he kind of wanted to go on this crusade to teach people the uh, value of life. Um, but we never really got what happened um, in the f uh, moments related to the actual events of the chemo, uh, how he got into it and all of that. So this looks like it's going to answer a lot of those questions. He creates the game as far as those victims go and all of that. So. It feels like it's also a prequel to the whole franchise because it's that starting point, but then it felt also a little bit more like a, a sequel because it relates to something later on related to his protege, Amanda. So I think it was Amanda, the, the uh, character played by Shawnee Smith. So um, if you're a fan of the films, I think, believe it's coming out later this year in 2023. So uh, look out for that. But in the meantime, it has a very, very good trailer. So definitely a worth or definitely worth the watch there um as far as the films to watch this week i did have a chance to watch a couple of dc films the first one is the animated film justice league war world um i went into it with high hopes that it was gonna be something along the lines of dc's um version of planet hulk or even um thor ragnarok where we have heroes battling uh, with this over the top style like game master kind of thing but as it turns out it was more of we have a game master kind of but he's messing with these superheroes minds um, from different parts of their memories taking them back in time to control them the best comparison I want to say is related to the Marvel Secret Invasion TV show where uh, humans were keep, kept in the stasis pods and their memories were used to give the the scroll a human form and their memories, identities and all of that to control the planet and ultimately try and take it over. But um, with the help of um, Martian Manhunter, they're able to escape uh, the game and go back to reality. So it actually kind of reminded me of um, there's a Stargate episode or Stargate SG-1 episode that does a similar thing where um the sg1 is held in these stasis pods with this game master they keep going in these loops and um ultimately they make their way and they're able to escape so war world, world was kind of like that it was less a war world and more um survival of the fittest trying to escape figure out what's going on and escape more like i guess it was a mix of like 
um, Marvel's Secret Invasion with a little bit of Matrix going on, I guess. Like, escape what you think is your reality to what is actually reality. So, it was an okay film. I'd probably give it a grade of about 70%. The early parts of the film, uh, where they're in different um, time periods, was good. It was a really slow burn, but ultimately that was actually the better parts of the film. Merging the characters was actually good enough, but the ending didn't really last. The transitions were not that great, so that's kind of why it was a, it's a hard film to get behind. Um, the other film I had a chance to finally watch is the film The Flash. So it's a film that's loosely based on the Flashpoint paradox where Barry Allen goes back in time to try and save his mom, but, uh, but ultimately breaks the timeline and creates different realities and versions of events that happened so in trying to create to save his mom he makes the situation worse so it's um save his mom on one hand and break reality on the other um so for me overall i actually thought it was really good i did actually want more barry allens uh, rather than just the two that we got um, and I want to say almost that three would have been good, like Spider-Man or the Far From Home, whichever the last one was with all three eras of Spider-Man in it. So it would have been nice to have maybe one more Spider-Man to even out, even it out. But um, but then also maybe spend a little bit more time uh, time jumping to have more time with the Batman. So that was actually the highlight of the film where we got to see a. Uh, younger looking Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck in his bat suit, which would look really, really um, futuristic, advanced, high tech with the blue accents and all of that. So I thought that was particularly good. So it was nice to see uh, that going on. Um, and then when Barry Allen breaks the timeline, we get to go back in time or not back in time, but to an alternate reality where we have an older version of Bruce Wayne played by Michael Keaton so we get to have that um that particular connection so it was nice to uh see him back in action don the cape uh use a couple uh, mainly his biggest line in uh do you want to get nuts but um it was good to have him back in uh that particular role uh, mentoring Barry Allen from his point of view and um all of that um granted we weren't gonna get Penny out or Penny um not Penny, but Alfred Pennyworth. Um, I believe that actor died, so it would have. So I understand that part. But the thing that kind of falls apart here is the same thing where it would have been nice to have one more Batman in the film. So granted, at the end of it, they do have a special cameo role by George Clooney to indicate that Barry Allen did not actually fix the um, past or the fix the timeline. But it would have been nice to have more George Clooney, have all of them on screen together. Um, just like I, an outside perspective for me, Michael Keaton and George Clooney would have been an interesting combination to have on screen together, to act together as Batman, even with Ben Affleck, just to tie that all together. So it would have been a, um, interesting plot line to tie it all together with the Barry Allens. Um, I also understand why they wouldn't have Val Kilmer in the film. But it would have been nice to have him in that role to have that effect. Um, just like have that, sh like have a show that's tie in Val Kilmer's actual personal health issues with the effects of playing Batman for so long is a side effects. With they sh did show very well for Michael Keaton when he says the line before the prison fight scene that this is gonna hurt, and then we see him he um, healing himself with the band aids and ointment and gauze and all that stuff, but. It would have been nice to have him and uh, George Clooney on screen together, but also have Christian Bale in there um, at some point where, um, like, tied into that the last Batman movie where he was hiding and in retirement, um, have the Flash go to that point and be the have that be the reason why he, um, why uh, Christian Bale's Batman goes back into action. So. Would have been nice for that, and or even just have them time have him time jump across the various realities to interact with all the different Batman in their own universes, and then come back to the real one or the one that he started in that he broke to fix that one. So that's kind of one of those things where it does fall apart for me. But because the movie was very interesting, I enjoyed it. It had enough heart. Um, was saving the mom. Why the 
um, Barry Allen Prime didn't want to tell the other one about um, their mom dying. So all like all of that, like the the action that in and of itself, especially like the like I said, I already mentioned I like the Ben Affleck bat suit, but I did also particularly like the Michael Keaton fight scene in the prison with him going or flying down as a bat, go sweeping around, actually flying around, having more action than he did in Batman and Batman Returns. So it was good to see like a fully formed bat Michael Keaton Batman in action. So things like that were really, really good. And then having the cameo with, with George Clooney was fine, but it just feels like they could have done a lot better um, and have more of those interactions or have more of the kind of Spider-Verse version of, of the Flash where he interacts with the different Flash in the different universes and, to discover his ultimate power and also get back to his reality. So um, things like that are why it takes some points away. So overall, if I was to grade it, I would probably give the film a grade of about an 85%. Like I said, it was a very good film. The beginning parts had lots of color, especially with Wonder Woman's cameo, um, Ben Affleck's Batman, uh, having seen the original Batmobile from the Michael Keaton era, and the Flash's red suit. So all of that was good. Just It feels like they didn't take it um, a step further to do a lot more than they could have, or that they had done. So... Um, that's why I gave it a few less points, but then also because of, I guess, the production hell that I went through, it's kind of understandable why they couldn't, or why they didn't do as much as they could have because of all of that. So they ultimately just wanted to get a film out. They had to, at some point, cut their losses and stop making it, I guess, a money pit for the film and ultimately get it released. Um, so but with that being said, that's the bulk of that. So I am also continuing to play um, Brutal Doom, the mod... Um, the mod that you add to the original Doom, in this case, Ultimate Doom. Um, I did finish the first episode, so now I'm about halfway through the second episode, so, um, or a little bit more than halfway through the second episode, so I've gotten through a few of the chapters and the secret level, so I'm almost done in getting to the point of meeting, I believe, the second, um, episode has a cyber demon. I forget if it was the second or third one. I think it was the second one, but I um, so I'm almost done with the second episode. So um, um, continue to follow along on the YouTube channel there. So I'll have my final review of that when I'm done. But overall, I'm really enjoying the gameplay and the graphical upgrade and performance updates and the weapons and animations and gore and all of that stuff. So definitely a fun gameplay there. Um, as far as the TV show update about what I'm watching next, I'm finally deciding that I'm going to try and get through the, um, get through a rewatch of Stargate SG-1. I know I still have not finished Stargate Atlantis, so I figure at some point I'll continue watching that. I think I'm still in the middle of season two, but I remember why I didn't continue is just that it gets really, it gets more serialized and dramatic than anything else, whereas... Um, Stargate SG-1, while it started with, it was very episodic and serialized, but even with all the stuff they had with the ghoul, they were able to expand it. There was a lot of discovery and exploration and fun going on. With Atlantis, there's still a lot that, it feels like there's just way too much that happens on Atlantis. Going around, there's not too much other exploration or scientific discoveries or anything like that. So it kind of feels like they're limited, limited, limited themselves with, um, staying on Atlantis and then learning about the Wraith and everything else is peripheral, extra white noise kind of stuff. So uh, regardless, that's why I'm giving Stargate SG-1 another watch. I figure a couple episodes a day should make it go by pretty quickly for 11 seasons or whatever, but we'll see if that falls apart, you know, by the end of the first or second season, but figured I'd give that a try, see if I can get through that. But in the meantime, also, I learned that Guardians of the Gar uh, Galaxy Volume 3 is now available for streaming on Disney+. Plus. So I'm hoping by the next episode to have watched that movie to review it. I have not seen it yet. I haven't really been spoiled on what happens in it. So um, I am planning on giving it a watch to see how it is. Um, so look out for that. Um, hopefully next week, maybe the week after. I might even try and wedge it in maybe in between um my gameplay of doom between episodes two and three but regardless i'm gonna give it a watch see how it is see if 
um, see how it kind of compares to the first and second films. So that is actually all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media. All the links are up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, along with past episodes, subscription links, uh, supporting the show and all of that good stuff. Uh, patrons get early access to the show along with um, ad-free versions of the episode, which is up on the which get which is all on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel N01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.